Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Thank you so much to New America for hosting and having me here today. Um, I am excited to be here and to share this wonderful resource that we created in partnership with uh, New America and PIA. So the youth, I'm sorry, the Equity and Youth Apprenticeships Program Toolkit was designed um, to assist K-12 higher ed and workforce um, leaders to build and um, scalable, equitable youth apprenticeship programs. The toolkit is full of resources. There's readings, there's discussions, there's activity. And the idea for the toolkit is to get the conversation started to help recognize and mitigate the structural barriers that exist in youth apprenticeship programs. And we focus on three main areas within the toolkit. That is access, belonging, and of course, continuous improvement. So when we think about access, we wanna know is the program open to everyone or does it feel more like an invitation only type of situation? Our own cultural, site, uh, cultural stereotypes, implicit bias and macro messaging can act as barriers to some students and it prevents the program from being inviting to them. So the whole idea of access is that we wanna create a program where every student feels they can see themselves within that program, but also that they have access to that program. And that is through making sure that when we send out information that it's in various languages, that it reaches just not the students who we think should be in these programs, but even students who maybe again, through our own equity lens, we don't feel have a place in these programs. And that leads us to our next section, which is belonging. And so when we think about belonging, again, it's more than just the students being present for the photo op that you, we, we see visually that the, the program is culturally diverse. We wanna make sure that we go beyond that, that underrepresented student, students often do not see themselves in a lot of career fields. And so it's really important that as we start to build these apprenticeship programs, that we have the students be able to see themselves actually in these roles and not just invite it to the table as sort of an afterthought. And so that the environment in which the programs are being housed are inviting to the students. And that takes some work on both sides. So the toolkit, again, can be used in a way to help train up the staff so as the students are being involved and being placed into these programs, they feel that they are an integral part of the process. And then finally, we discuss the idea of continuous improvement. And this concept comes from the idea that once we get the students in the program, the work's not over. It actually continues. We need to think about how we're collecting data, both qualitative and quantitative data, so that we can then go back over the course of the program and reevaluate. We can have conversations with those who are part of the program um, from all aspects, those who help recruit, those who help support, the students themselves, and of course the parents, because we want to be able to see where corrections may be needed, but also the areas that we've been super successful and how we can share that success with other types of programs. So I know that we're on a short time and I wanna make sure I make space for questions that you may have about the toolkit. So that was a very brief and quick introduction, but again, I wanted to leave space for us to engage in further discussions. Well, the first one I should start with that, how do you access the toolkit? At the end of the session, we will put the link to the toolkit, but you can also access it from the NAEP website, which is naeequity.org. And then once you're there, you would just look for special programs or under special programs, you will see PIA. And there are other resources that are there in relation to the toolkit, but that's where you'll find it. Um, one question is, does continuous improvement involve career pathway programs? It certainly can. And so again, the idea is that everyone who's using this toolkit will be at different places of their program. So the toolkit is built whether or not you are someone who's just thinking about programs, someone who already has programs established, or if you're right in the middle. And so with those, diff with those resources that I spoke about, there are several um, activities that can be used interactively so that you can address how um, this idea to access and get students involved in career pathways and those types of programs. Okay, so the question is, um, could I share a few concrete examples of how the toolkit could be used by um, K-12 leaders, stakeholders, um, and the likes? So as I was just mentioning, the, um, recognizing that everyone's at a different location in their program development, you can use the toolkit as a way to start a conversation. So once you get everyone at the table, being able to pull out some of these resources that address issues around access. So for example, being able to look at your recruitment strategies, and it's through that recruitment strategy, how equitable is your recruitment strategy? Uh, you can also use it to 
begin conversations just around equity in general. So there's um, pieces in there that helps you to look at certain barriers that may exist that you can help to examine, um, again, this idea of unconscious bias and how if, the, if we are bringing our own biases into the table, into the conversation, then that could bleed over in how we're making the programs accessible and available to those students. And then finally, you could use it just as a, a way to continue the conversation throughout your stakeholders team. So in the back of the book, there is a five week guide that sort of sets you up on which activities you should use and how to build upon each one of those activities. But one of my favorite things to do with the toolkit is actually just self reflection. I think we all are passionate about the work that we're doing. And sometimes we need to take a step back to just reevaluate how deep <laughs> we can be in our own thought process. And so it helps me to stay focused and look at new ideas and, and actually just keep myself um, in that idea of continuously learning how to make these programs much better and more equitable. There was another question. Um, our partners are in an early stage. We just now bring them together as partners and setting a vision for our to be launch programs. We are committed to developing a program that leads to equitable outcomes, but need to get ourselves on the same page um, about what that means and what success could look like. Could this toolkit help and what advice um, could we provide? So definitely. Um, I think one of the things that I've seen in working with PIA and other agencies is when we talk about equity, everyone has their own definition. And it's a definition that's ever evolving. So I think one thing you could use with the toolkit is as a conversation starter, but also as a place setter to figure out how does everyone on your team view equity? What does that definition mean to them? And maybe create a common working definition that you all are gonna work from and build your program against that. So having this shared group, this shared identity of what you wanna talk about and how you wanna approach it. And the toolkit has wonderful resources um, within that that you can do in a group activity, maybe break off in pairs and come back. I know in our virtual spaces here, um, going to the board and like putting things on sticky notes is not necessarily a, a viable, but I strongly suggest that you have these conversations and have them early because the big thing about equity is we don't want it to feel like an afterthought. It is very difficult to create a program and then go back and make it fit in the equity boxes. So if we can get into the habit of as we're planning these programs and thinking about some of the barriers that I heard in the panelists earlier talk about transportation, limited resources. One of the things that I know COVID has shed light on is this whole um, piece around internet and technology. Those disparities that existed before have now been amplified as we think about households that only have one computer or you know, can't afford internet access. Libraries are closed. And so some of the resources that we would naturally gravitate to are, are school institutions. Um, are closed. And so because the students don't have those types of resources, it is important for us to think about those types of barriers that exist as we're planning the programs, um, because that would really help you if you build this whole program and then they don't come, ask them the why they don't come versus what can we do to make sure that they have the ability to get there is, is the better question. And then the last thing I'll add to that is just making sure you have the right people at the table. Um, we've been talking a lot about historical context, this idea of community as experts, but also most importantly, the youth voice. So as you're thinking about building these programs out, it is really important to have the right people at the table and also decision makers at the table who can help you to build out the program and provide the necessary resources that you would need to get started. Um, hopefully that answers the question. Uh, I think there's one more. Oh, there was more of a comment, but we appreciate and hope the toolkit has been um, helpful to you. Are there any other questions? I know you guys have been going all morning, so I'm, I understand if you're you're hitting that button. <laughs> okay, not seeing any other questions. So, um, oh wait. So the, the comment is the flip side of virtual learning is that those with disabilities um, and or who have social emotional challenges may find it um, a better platform. Are you looking into how to address those communities? 
Um, Nate has done some work recently around students with disabilities, and there is another resource that you can find that's on our website. But in relation to the toolkit, that is definitely addressed. We have a section around underrepresented, or as it's referred to in Perkins Five, special populations groups, and persons with disabilities is listed there. And just like before COVID happened, that was something that we didn't think about. Um, a lot of people don't think about in developing the programs. Is it accessible for someone who's in a wheelchair, the visual ones that we see, but also the disabilities that we cannot see. And so again, during this um, time where COVID has just put the spotlight on so many inequities that exist, this toolkit can definitely be used as a way for you to have those conversations, to start thinking about things beyond the more obvious ones that we always talk about when it comes to getting students into these various programs. But when we were thinking about students who may have other type of disadvantages that we don't necessarily think about. Um, using some of the, ac the activities around barriers, for example, would be a great one. There are several scenarios that help you to start a conversation and to think more um, deeply and directly about some of your own bias that you might, unconscious bias, um, sorry, that you might be bringing. Or again, I even say sometimes assumptions. We make assumptions that everyone has access to these tools and resources that they need. So that barriers um, section in the toolkit would be very useful to have that conversation. And it looks like the resource, um, the CTE pipeline to career success students with disability has been placed in the chat box for your use. Any other questions? Well, like I said, I've been sitting in on a lot of sessions today. There's been a lot of great conversations. Um, around equity and it's really great to hear that people are really having those hard conversations um, among themselves but it sounds like there's a lot that's been going on post-COVID that people are realizing that we need to address and so I thank you for your time I definitely hope that you will go and check out the toolkit if you have any questions or comments about it please reach out 